first guest. He is my first guest. Yes. We haven't had a guest yet, have we? No. But we have, uh... What are you laughing at, Fred? I know we haven't had a guest yet, but we get talking out here, and sometimes I forget. She's also one of your best guests. She is. She is uh, one of the most outgoing, honest people I know. She's really delighted and talented, too, and always has something to say, yes. which helps when you're... Excuse me? You betcha. Oh, there she is right now. She has something to say even when she's not on. <laughs> That's why she's a good guest. She starts talking before she gets on, which, of course, usually ruins the interview because she does all of it. By the... Suzanne Blachette. Yes. A test of my love for you. What is a test? I went to the dentist today, and Novocaine, and I feel like Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Can you say? But it only hurts when I laugh, so. <laughs> you're safe here, then. Is that what, that's what you're going to say. You were, you were certainly safe during the monologue. Judging by the topical material. <laughs> yes, nudging. You may nudge my tooth off. We had somebody else on last week who had been to the dentist also and came on still just where it started to wear off. and. It's a strange thing. See, you look fine, but you feel that you don't. No, I because... feel like the whole nose yeah. is spread off. Can I? Is it no, moving? You look... yeah. Certainly it's moving. That's so attractive, isn't it? Yeah. What did you have to have done uh, at some point? You don't well, want to you know, when I that. go on a vacation, it's like a segment of medical center. <laughs> 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 I have a disaster area. I chip my tooth. And I uh, That's right, developed you have an allergy things. to the sun. <laughs> Are you accident prone? I mean, do things seem to happen to you when you? They, they seem to. Yes, it's always like, on vacation. Uh, vacation. Yes, I think it's because I have guilt about vacation, so all the terrible things. Or it's because I'm finally so relaxed that, you know, I've chipped my tooth because I'm eating things I shouldn't yeah. be eating. Well, you look like fine. Like a lobster bone or something. You look good. Thank I you. I saw you the last time we worked together was at the uh, Tony Awards in. Uh, yeah. In New you York. were terrific. I got to tell you. I didn't do anything. I walked out and did no, my little thing, wonderful. and that was it. You were Great. wonderful because I. Uh... I had to introduce that crazy Bette Midler who started on that show. <laughs> that she hasn't changed a bit. She's oh. remarkable. And your line was wonderful about her clothes. Did another light go out? Yes. Uh huh. Mm. One went out last night too. Each night one is going. <laughs> I said this last night. It's just like Dinah Shore. They turned out one of her burners. <laughs> She went in the next day, and another burner was out, and she went into a coal stove one day. And that's and how she knew. And this, this little one, night by night, another light has been going out here. Well, I'm glad I'm going back to work on the New Heart Show. I hope the set is still there. Yeah, when do you start Everything on that again? Everything in the kitchen. Tuesday. We start our new season, our third year. Great. I'll be cooking again. Mm -hmm. It's such a thrill. I have cooked more on the Bob Newhart show. You do a lot of that, don't yes. you? Because of the set, you know, the uh, kitchen room, a uh, kitchen, and a little dinettes, and then you go into the kitchen a lot. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, welcome home, Bob. Kiss, kiss. Would you like something to eat or a cup of coffee? I finally told him I have cooked more on the show in the last two years than I have cooked in seven years married to Tommy Gallagher. You, you don't. You and Tommy eat out a lot, don't you? Every night. Every night? <laughs> don't you cook at all? <laughs> Not anymore. No, I used to cook. I used to be a terrific cook, but. Uh, my husband has an interesting palate. I mean, gourmet. You mean he that? must know. He must have a potato with every meal because he's <laughs> Irish and he has an ethnic responsibility to drink scotch and eat potatoes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Otherwise, it's, it's so not it's, a just, meal. it's a personal uh, when you thing do with pasta him. and potatoes. It offends my my aesthetic soul. I have a wonderful little casserole of potatoes and pasta and noodles, and because otherwise he will not eat a meal. He works his way right from the white bread with mayonnaise, of course, <laughs> to the potato, and then segues right into dessert and passes over anything else. That oh God, let there be light. I thought I had a tumor for a moment. <laughs> Is that Tommy trying to tell me something? Yes. No, it's not a thrill to cook for him because uh, when we first got married, I had never cooked. You, know, my mother can't cook. Really? You may have gathered I thought all the mothers could cook. No, no, not well, oh. my dad had the theater, so they ate out every night. That's right. Danny's hideaway was my second kitchen. It's so you never home, learned never to cook. Ate home. Sunday night they'd call out for food, and my mother would somehow louse up that order. But luckily you married a guy who doesn't particularly care about it, right? Well he would he would like to eat home more often, or he would like to eat at some of the true gourmet restaurants like Pink's Pink's mm. hot dogs. That's yeah. his idea of a terrific. That's gourmet food, huh? Do you know that? Last year for his birthday, I seriously considered hiring a limousine and taking him to the toilets of Los Angeles, which is his kind of food, you know, one course at... And just the junk food stuff? That's yeah. it. That's what he adores. You know, Chasen's and the Bistro, he tolerates for me. 
That's so there was no real thrill about cooking because uh, anything I produced that was extraordinary really bored him. That's interesting that you mentioned about cooking on the show because it, it fits in. It's a nice thing. So soap operas. You ever know soap operas? They drink so much coffee oh, yeah. on soap operas. You wonder how those actors make it through the week because the scene is either in the living room or the kitchen. As soon as they walk in, uh, coffee, Dora? Yes. And it's coffee for the whole series. Well, you know, poor Bob. Ginny loves parties, as you know. She'll right. walk down the street. She'll see somebody with a warm face and say, come on. I'm back we're having records and I'll make something to eat and forever people are coming back to the house and we had about four shows in a row you have to tell people you're talking about oh uh, Ginny and Bob Newhart I'm sorry and we had about four shows in a row with, in order to get everybody into the show it had to take place in our living room therefore there was some kind of party and Bob said I mean, it's, it's Ginny, wherever, you know, he's got it all week there and then on our show. <laughs> and every night's a party, you know. Not yeah. for us, however. Mr. Gallagher, who is terribly gregarious, likes to be in his robe about 7.30. Is that a, is that a typical night? Don't you, now, don't you go out and 7.30? So we eat at 6.30. If I knocked on your door and walked in, what, what would I see on a typical night? You mean before I had a chance to comb my Never hair? mind that. I mean, just generally. Uh, you would see me uh, in, uh, in a robe. Mr. Gallagher in a robe, and if I didn't know it was you, I would have on those knitted wood woolen booties, you know, which <laughs> that's, is that's an so elegant. Home, huh? Yeah, Ava Gabor tells me I should get my act together with feathers and things, but I once tried that and I burned a hole in my peignoir. It didn't work out. Oh, good. And um, I think I look elegant, but somehow it's what's wrong with this picture, everything. And Tommy looks like the Duke of Windsor in a seersucker robe, you know. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even have to have the, the thing hanging out of the pocket. You know it should be there. Yeah. Its body is perfect. Sitting with a baked potato. With a baked potato and a bottle of... <laughs> <laughs> just, that's just a prop. The man doesn't drink. Just no. great, unfermented just grape juice. How is the intrepid flyer? I, oh. I kid him all the time, and I probably shouldn't because it's, it's real for him. But... Uh, I had to make a trip with you when you were flying once to Las Vegas, and uh, Mr. Gallagher was on the plane. And you could tell he was on the plane because the whimpering alone <laughs> uh, filtered back clear into the tourist section. The whimpering and we're, little things like, we're going to crash. Uh, you know, the Wright brothers got wasn't meant and all of these things. He really goes bananas, doesn't well, he? Well, we flew to New York because we had no choice. But uh, then he That's started where we were headed. telling me the wonders of... Uh, of train travel, and that it might be something that will not be in our life, in our children's life, and we should. So we took the train from New York to Miami, which was our next stop. And uh, I mean, he, he was so panicked, it was <coughs> silly. And I, I do love the trains, and we got on it, I think four o'clock in the afternoon, got off at three the next day. They had the dining cars. What he didn't tell me is the reason he really wanted to go was the menu on the train. Oh. Fried chicken, Baked candy potatoes. yams, sugar mm. cured ham, peanut butter soup, yes. you know. I got off now. I peanut, you, butter peanut butter soup. Peanut butter soup. These were just a few little things. Now, what must have happened during the night, because I ate on the train, is somebody obviously crept into our car and injected fat in my thighs. <laughs> because, you know, I know carbohydrates never touch my lips. And when I tried to get in my pants the next mm. day, it was a tribute no. to the strength of those threads that they didn't go for. Has he gotten over the, uh, the phobia? Yes, he has. Uh, uh, flying? flying? Oh, absolutely not. It absolutely. is a phobia, you know, it's an unnatural... The man will drive to Hawaii if he can possibly... I didn't... <laughs> I didn't help him, and I know, and, you know, I got... Because as we're on, I said, you've never flown trans debris before. <laughs> and he said he was praying at the tomb of the unknown pilot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Little things like that that really shook him. And he says, what about lightning? And I says, don't worry about it, you'll go down like a rock. <laughs> Because of you, he stayed drunk for four days extra, remembering all the things that he said. He just has a few just to calm down, doesn't he? Yeah, Only man I've ever seen come on a plane in a stretcher. Have you know you ever what they seen the stewardesses when we get off the flight? Because <sighs> they've been running. Well, I told scratch. you what to do to get him over that. Yeah. Get him up in a small, small plane. Really? That's yeah. that really oh, works. Oh, sure, I'll get him up in a small plane. Just with a, one of those little uh, two two passenger planes and fly around with a single engine. And oh. once he sees how it works. He will be so scared. <laughs> no, he won't. That'll really, that really does help. The plane won't kill him, but the car No, will. they'll have... Let me interrupt here. We'll return. You got another poem tonight yes, for us? Yes, I do. Oh, About good. flying. About flying. Good. Oh, okay, we'll take a short yeah. break, and we'll be right back. Just dancing, Bobby. You said that do people people still go dancing? But it's mainly discotheques. You mean dancing, dancing where you hold and yeah, and dip. Ballroom. You still dip. <laughs> when I've had a little too much, sometimes <laughs> I, I will dip just a little yeah. bit. 
Um, no, we've only danced, I think, in our 10 years of a relationship four times, and once I followed Tommy to the men's room. And he just dipped and went in, and that, and that was it. it. Well, I consider that a dance. Well, it's mainly discotheques now, yeah. right? I love to dance. Yeah. You got a poem about flying about since flying. we were on the subject? We'll blow another sponsor for you. Oh, no. We're not. Now, I oh, must no. tell you that I think my husband is fantastic because he goes in spite of it. So this is done with love. <clears throat> oh, how I pity those others like I, wed to a spouse who's frightened to fly. For every vacation is met with the wail that he is not going, and that's without fail. You plead and implore, citing virtues of travel, while all of his psyche you try to unravel. While you opt for places gorgeous and far, his only choices are those reached by car. And he tells you he's psychic and you'll crash for sure while you go on reading another brochure. And you tempt him with places he'll love without fail, but he only responds to the ones reached by rail. And then in all fairness, he's certain to note that he's willing to go to resorts reached by boat. But time of the essence, though it isn't fair, only allows you to travel by air. So you must endure the threats of divorce, knowing the while that he's going, of course. So just buy the tickets and keep them well hidden and expect a few moments of feeling guilt-ridden. And endure all the anger, the threats, and the nags, but all of the while keep packing those bags. <laughs> and gear up for battle night after night for at least one full week before scheduled flight. The day of the journey, don't get in a funk if he feels obliged to get painfully drunk. And while you're in flight, you'll make your excuses to the others around for his muttered abuses. Just keep in mind, when the wheels touch the ground, his brain will return to be being quite sound. Then relax and enjoy your fabulous day and love him to death by night and by day. For though it's a horror to have to go through, remember he's there, because it matters to you. That's for his way. Letters to Tom. Yeah. I've asked you before, did you ever put the bind these up in some kind of a little book? You, yeah, you, I have you, a book for him. Some of them are, are really for him that I've never that read on the because, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> oh, whoopee time, right? I see. <laughs> but he was very sweet, and I didn't mind taking the train, and we wound up in Miami and had a terrific time. Except the problem in Miami is that we have so many friends there now. You know, what starts out to be a rest, because when it was just our friends, the Ralports, it was terrific. We stay with them, and the boys go on the boat, and Patty and, and I Now you have to socialize. Now it's everybody, and they cook for us, and they take care of us. So when we came back, uh, we went to Palm Springs for four to days relax. for a rest. Yeah. Do you have any, now, Tommy suffers from, uh, I don't know what the let phobia would be called, fear of flying. I really don't know. Chicken. No, there's a, <laughs> there's a name for it. Like, you know, there's a, uh, claustrophobia, and there's a uh, fear of heights, which is... Uh, Acrophobia. Acrophobia. I have, I have that a little bit on Hollywood Squares. Have, yeah. Do you have any phobias? <laughs> any no, unnatural just, fears of... Just, no, not really. I don't. No, because I'm not aware of when I'm in danger half the time, anyhow. So I'm well, not look, it can just be an enough. unnatural fear of something, no. you know. I have I've, well, fear of snakes, which we've discussed. Whenever you've had the animals on the it's show, probably reptilophobia, yes, or something it is. like that. Yes, no. it is. But uh, I have strange ones. Do you, have fear of... do you know his, his phobia? No, what is I have this? several of them that I tell her that one. That I can't one, imagine you're such a tribute to mental health. Well, not really. I have. Um... Was it nicto nictophobia? Nictophobia yeah. is one I've talked about. That was a uh, fear of. Um, running backwards at full speed into a doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> Metallophobia. Metallophobia. That's a fear that coat hangers, wire coat hangers, are going to come out of the closet and I didn't get in bed with me. <laughs> I mean, Don't that's knock a, it a, if strange, you uh, It's a strange thing, I know, but I, I have little weird ones like that. It's a good deep research, I suppose, will do that. I think the only fear I might have is that when I stand up, my dog will drop from my lap. You know, I have a, a Yorkshire Terrier that's... That's roverphobia. That's rover <laughs> If you stand up, your dog will drop from your lap. I have a one-pound Yorkie who's 13 years old, who that's has only very... spent two years on the ground and the rest of the time in my lap. <laughs> and when I stand, her little nails hang onto my belt. She is the, small dog. the oldest living Yorkie. She is the Dolores Del Rio of Yorkies because <laughs> she has this philosophy that if she sleeps 23 hours a day, she will look gorgeous. Is the forever. dog all right? She's fine. She has four teeth and she'll gum you to death. Yes. She thinks she's a <laughs> Does your dog do now? I, I don't mind dogs. Sometimes the people who own the dogs drive me crazy because if I go to their house, one thing that just absolutely I, I can't stand is the dog immediately jumps up and if it's a big dog, they, they put their paws about here and 
the owner always says, he doesn't do that to everyone. And this is supposed to be some kind of a compliment as the dog jumps into your lap or around your neck. Uh, I don't understand that. Did, no, I'm, is your dog trained? My, well, uh, everything but uh, potty trained. Yorkies are notorious. Well, that's almost an impossible task. But. Eight years of her life, the only thing she did was paper. With paper was to read it. But I, um, I tried this project. But they're so small, that's not really a great hazard. Not it? unless you step in it. <laughs> <laughs> But I, we moved into an apartment, you know, we sold a house and we have a terrace, so I thought, well, I'll try and break her to a kitty litter box, because she is so tiny. And she's so bright, she's stubborn, pound for pound, she is stubborn. So I got this kitty litter box and she would go on the rug and I'd say, bad girl, bad girl, and then I'd put her in the box, good girl, good girl, you know, I very know good that. at training. Picked it up in one day, she'd go on the rug and jump in the box and whack <laughs> See, people think dogs are human. No. That's the problem. They no. treat them as human beings, and that's wrong. I've no. never had good luck with dogs. Well, the problem with this one I had a really dog once. I, when I leave on vacation, I put him up on blocks. <laughs> I and remember it, him. What? I remember that dog. <laughs> yeah, because I, he couldn't travel, and it was a very traumatic for him. <laughs> blocks. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. What? Well, yes, I would. And I'd come back in the garage and the dog would be there. No, what? When she dies, I'm going to stuff her and just keep her in my lap. No, you wouldn't do I've that. I've gotten now, used you? to that warm spot. <laughs> there is a, there, there's an article, for example, today in the Los Angeles Times on Pet Haven. Did yeah. you happen to read that? No, I didn't. They have uh, mortuaries or funeral services for pets. And I can understand how people really get attached to an animal, especially if they're, say, a childless family or something. It really becomes part of the family. But they have pet mortuaries here, and people oh, sure. will take. Dogs, birds, uh, hamsters, and so forth, and they actually go and have a, a small casket. And apparently, this seems a little, a little strange yeah. with no. everything that's going on. You think the money might be better spent I doing so. something else, but they actually do have service. And you read this this morning, and a little redwood casket about this big for a, for a cat and with a, with a marker. But you know, pets it sounds are. Sounds just a little strange. Pets become companions and people. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, when I did the poem about the big dog, you know, the reaction was phenomenal, and the letters that people sent with pictures of their dogs and stories, and it's very emotional, very touching. Yeah, I never had good luck. I had a smart dog once when I was a kid. Yeah. Tell us about it. Well, he, was, <laughs> he used to take after dinner. In those days, you didn't have the canned dog food like Alpha yeah, or stuff. Yeah. You just give him table scraps, and he'd take a bone every day and run out into the garage. You know, and we found out he was building his own dog. <laughs> Uh, I had that file back then, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> Never forget. Two great dog jokes. <laughs> when they get them out. Oh, God. <laughs> As the Colonel is sometimes addressed, oh, yes. Fantastic. By those who love him, yes. With peanut butter soup. With peanut butter soup, mm. right. I'll find out how a bucket of chicken can be a barrel of fun.